Hello everyone and welcome to this session of Dr. Michael Explains. In this session we're going to be discussing electrolyzed hypochlorous acid. Um, it easily is one of the most significant sterilants that I have personally discovered. It can be used in the kitchen for cleaning and sterilizing salmonella on countertops. You can use it for immediate wound care when you get a cut that you then go to the hospital and get stitches for. This isn't something that you use instead of. It has a phenomenal sterilizing effect. It's used by dentists, wound care specialists, infectious disease specialists. It's used in restaurants, vets, dentist's office. Uh, and here's, here's the story on it. And I'd like to clarify some of the ambiguousness of what is the difference between 2.5 acid water and what is the difference between that compared to electrolyzed 2.5 hypochlorous acid. Um, a lot of machines are toting that their uh, ionizer produces 1.0 water to 12.0 water. 1.0 pH strong acid water is not even closely related to 2.5 hypochlorous acid. Anytime you bring the pH of water down, you create an acid. Just because it's an acid doesn't mean it's sterilizing. Soda, Sprite for instance, is 2.5 acid water. It's 2.5 but I wouldn't recommend that you start treating your wounds with it. Electrolyzed reduced hypochlorous acid has a salt solution that is in the machine that is used and ionized and then combined with a hydroxyl anion as a carrier making hypochlorous acid. Let me explain. We're gonna go to the screen sharing. We'll get through some of this. I'm gonna start the slideshow here. Excellent. Hypochlorous acid is <clears throat> first starts off with a disassociation of the water molecule. When water is disassociated with a large electric current, you basically separate hydrogen and hydroxyl anions. This releases molecular hydrogen, active oxygen, hydroxyl anions in a water that's been restructured for rapid absorption. Hypochlorous acid is a weak acid with a chemical formula of HOCl. It basically forms when chlorine dissolves in water. It's the basis and premise for bleach type stuff. However, hypochlor electrolyzed hypochlorous acid is done in the presence of an electric current. It cannot be isolated in a pure, pure form due to its rapid equilibration with its precursors, basically salt water, base, and it works as an oxidizer. If you take water, which is H2O, Add salt solution, NaCl. In the presence of a strong electric charge, you're going to get 2.5 hypochlorous acid. This can be used in a number of ways for a number of reasons. Basically, what it does is it converts alkenes to chlorohydrins. Some people would say it denatures proteins. It breaks down cell membranes. Basically, if it's an infectious organism, it can destroy it pretty quickly. The best part about hypochlorous acid is that it is act naturally occurs in the body and it's generated in the neutrophils. That's actually part of where they discovered it. Um, it destroys bacteria, the invading bacteria in a system. Uh, and it has a biochemical agent that actually initiates the clotting process. Therefore, it makes it ideal for initial wound care. If you get a cut and you put hypochlorous acid on it, it's going to sterilize the area and initiate the clotting response. Uh, it's so effective that recent studies are actually underway testing the efficacy of using this to treat necrotic wounds, infections, things like that are totally resistant to current levels of antibiotics. A lot of the initial results are very promising. That doesn't mean that this is all you need. It just means that it's gaining knowledge and acceptability in the professional industry for wound care and infectious disease. Uh, it started off in 2009 with the FDA approval of electrolyzed hypochlorous acid, where it was cleared as a sterilant for reusable and durable medical and dental devices. Basically, it'll kill whatever's on it and make it usable again. The machine that they tested was a Sterilox unit, uh, had a hypochlorous acid with 650 to 675 parts per million, et cetera, et cetera. And it was a 24-hour test, and most of the results were rendered within 10 minutes. It's a single use machine that generates the hypochlorous acid on site. You can't go and say, hey, give me some hypochlorous acid and use it a week later. It has re uh, converted back to its original form, which makes it a salt water solution. 
Um, and you do need a salt water solution in the electrolysis chamber in order to produce this. Electrolyzing regular tap water without the addition of a salt solution will not meet the FDA criteria. Yes, you can produce 2.5 acid water, but you cannot create FDA approved hypochlorous acid in an electrolyzed form. The FDA has not evaluated the SD501 in this regards to the best of my knowledge. So here's what's going on. Electrolysis and salt solutions. Basically, as we discussed, if you introduce a large electric current to a water supply, you're gonna break it apart by creating hydroxyl and a hydro hydroxyl ion ion and a hydrogen ion. You need a significant level of electrolysis power in order to disassociate the water molecule. That will also disassociate the salt solution, meaning it'll break it apart. You can't break this apart chemically. It's not something that dissolves. You actually have to burst the bonds so that they temporarily reform to make this substance. When you take H2O and you break it apart, you get a hydroxyl, sorry, a hydroxyl anion and a hydrogen ion. When you break this apart, you get these two components. Well, these two bind together and these bind together. That gives you electrolyzed hypochlorous acid, also known as HOCl. It is extremely effective on anything that it touches. The disinfectant charts are pretty much speak for themselves. This is strong electrolyzed acid water of 2.6 or below. This is neutral water. This is an acid 2.6 acid water that's not hypochlorous acid, which means it comes out of a machine without a salt solution. And this is your basis for bleach. And these are some commercial grade sterilants. If you start looking, you've got hep B virus, tuberculosis, AIDS, um, you've got salmonella, you got typhoid, you got enterovirus, bread molds, red yeast. Across the board, no live organisms detected within 30 seconds. Even tuberculosis, no live organisms within 30 seconds. Neutral water, nothing. Acid water, nothing. Bleach, nothing. Wasn't effective, didn't get it killed. And you can see that's a very effective statement to come across something that is that effective across the boards. And that's because of the nature of what it does. It actually destroys the cell of the invader within about 30 seconds. That way, a lot of times when you take antibiotics, you have to take them for days and days and days and days. Otherwise, you've just, quote unquote, fed the bug to make it a super bug. This one just kills it on contact. Now, admittedly, you're not going to take 2.5 electrolyzed acid water and drink it to try and kill an intestinal virus. You don't want to drink this. It is superficial. It is for wound care on the external surfaces. It is for hands, fingers, feet. If you get a cut, it's great. Um, even if you get like uh, a sore throat, you can gargle with it, but then spit it out. Do not be, start drinking 2.5 acid water electrolyzed. It is not what it's intended to do. Again, do not drink this. Um, ATS Labs did an independent evaluation of the uh, Enagix SD501 Super, and they tested it on a broad spectrum. They did staph, strep, in this report they did uh, strep and E. coli. On these slides they did MRSA, which is kind of the bane of the hospital world right now. It's the methyl-resistant staph aureus, and Crypti, which is the uh, Klebsiella pneumonia. Across the board, ATS labs found that the SD501 met the standards established by the FDA in 2009 for sterilization. Um, a lot of these results were complete sterilization with an ATP meter in less than 30 seconds. Um, and some of the wound care specialists and facilities that I've worked with and maintenance facilities for hospitals and such, uh, they've run their tests and the hypochlorous acid produces high levels of sterilization within a very short period of time, oftentimes faster than specialized chemical agents. Um, here's some case studies. This is my disclaimer. This is not designed to teach you how to treat wounds. This section particularly is dealt with a lot of the wound care specialists that I have worked with, 
a lot of the doctors, hospitals, and facilities. In all of the following case studies, hypochlorous acid was added to a standard treatment protocol. It was used in conjunction with all the other forms of traditional medical treatments. Fortunately, this has been led to several joint efforts among physicians, myself, wound care specialists, all over co the country. And it is designed to better serve our patients. It's not an us versus them. It's not, oh, well, you need what we've got. That is not the case. This is for educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, render assistance in any manner. And I'm not going to be giving out treatment protocols. I'm leaving them out on purpose. I don't want somebody going, oh, look at Dr. Michael on YouTube and he'll tell you how to get rid of that MRSA. No, that's not how this works. If you receive an injury, wound, or infection, seek immediate medical attention. Don't rely on hypochlorous acid only. If you have a situation where you have somebody like that, my contact information will be at the end of this slide presentation. You can have the physicians talk to me and we can set something up. I'm not going to go, oh, well, you soak it in this and you do that and you do this and you do that. That's not what this is for. We're trying to help get legitimate science with good studies that we can make this effective for everyone. With that said, let's begin. This will start with a MRSA patient, um, methyl-resistant staph aureus. The gentleman received it in a hospital. It was post-surgically, had his gallbladder removed, and one of the puncture wounds where they went in to look around got infected with MRSA because of the scope. Um, it ate a good chunk away. You can see that that's about three or four inches in diameter. After a couple of weeks, they ended up having to put a wound back in this, and he did broad-spectrum antibiotics. He did intravenous, he did oral, he did topical. He was doing a lot of things. Um, after five months on the wound vac and all the antibiotics they were doing, uh, he had pretty much a stale prognosis. It wasn't getting better, it wasn't getting worse. The wound got significantly smaller and started to heal. Within seven days of treatment with the hypochlorous acid, it measured half the size. Within 18 days, it had greatly reduced, and his infectious disease doctor declared the margins clear. Not me, not the patient. He was working with his physician in this, and they ended up removing the wound back. Here's another case. This is a this person cut their thumb in the kitchen, went to the hospital, got stitches, and a good case of MRSA. Uh, if you look over here, you can see all the dead tissue starting to necrotize and get really, really unhealthy. They were looking to amputate this. Within a few weeks of the protocols, significant improvement actually saved the thumb. Same thing here. This was a gangrenous finger and using the 2.5 hypochlorous water. Uh, this gentleman was actually looking to have the finger amputated. And within six weeks, it was within a margin that he had full function. Uh, this person had diabetic ulcerations in the foot that had been there for years, began the protocols, and again, area started to clear up. Um, this is my accident-prone son. He cut his leg taking the trash out and banged his head on a pipe playing outside. We used it for immediate sterilization. You can see he went and got stitches, but the area cleaned up. It healed really well. Um, this is another client of ours. She actually fell off a ladder. And uh, you can see that's a pretty nasty wound. Uh, went to the hospital, they got it all taken care of. She used the hypochlorous acid pre and post stitches. She used it every day to keep the wound clear of infection. And you can see on this picture here, you can just see the faintest line. The doctor did an exceptional job stitching it up. We followed the doctor, doctor's protocols to a T, and uh, it turned out really, really well for her. Again, this is another reason why I personally feel that the SD501 is the best electrolyzed reduced water machine on the market. Uh, many of you know about my daughter, Skylar. If you don't, there's a Dr. Michael Explains the Magic of Skywater. It's uh, out on YouTube. Uh, it was the only ionizer that actually worked for her. 
This machine produces seven types of highly bioavailable water. It is endorsed by thousands of doctors and used in hospitals all over the world. The drinking water it, produce, it creates produces molecular hydrogen, active oxygen, and antioxidants. You can also use this for full spectrum disinfecting, cleaning, food prep, and cosmetics. I uh, hope you've uh, found this enlightening. Uh, Dr. Michael Explains is now on Gmail. If you're considering any type of water ionizer, <clears throat> I've assembled a detailed scientific explanation that pretty much separates all the facts from the sales and marketing fiction. Uh, soon to be released will be Dr. Michael Explains the competition. Uh, if you have questions, if you're a healthcare provider or you need more information as it pertains directly to hypochlorous acid, please email me at drmichaelexplains at gmail.com for more information about the electrolyzed reduced water machine that we used for Skylar. Please go to www.skywaterinc.net. Uh, most people get led here by somebody that introduced them to the water. Please give them a call back, talk to them, get answers to questions, and if I can be of assistance, please let me know. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I hope this was beneficial to you. And uh, if I can help, let me know.